Hey guys, JC Smith here. Okay, so today we're going to start getting the motor out. I'm going to start with the intake. Four 10 millimeter headed bolts, 10 or 13, one or the other. Takes that whole uh, air cleaner assembly off. Then I'll get the serpentine belt off. Alternator comes out. Um, actually, you know, it could probably stay. I'm going to take things off that have to come off, like the AC compressor, power steering pump, uh, exhaust manifold studs, motor mounts, torque converter bolt, starter, all that kind of stuff. So let's get at it. Time for a new belt. Get some cracks in that one. Okay, so three motor mount bolts, 13 16 one, two, and a third one up here. That's the passenger side. Driver side, same thing. One, two. And a third one up here, sun's kind of messing with us there. Get those nuts out. And then, down here we have the starter. 13 millimeter here, 13 millimeter here. Uh, 13 millimeter on the starter post. 10 millimeter on the solenoid wire. Take that out. And there's an inspection cover here. It's got two 13 millimeter nuts. We're going to take that out. Okay. Um, you know, when you take the cab off like this, there's not a lot you have to do down below, okay? Now I'm going to get the torque converter bolt. So this is the driver's side. If you come between the oil cooler and the block, there's a little plug in here. Right there. Take that out. Let's see if I can get this in here. You can get to see that hole there. That's where you get to the torque converter bolts. And I believe on this one there's, I think there's six. I think there was four on the F-150, which was really weird. But this one I think is six. And then I have to heat up the studs to the exhaust right here. They don't want to come loose, so I'm going to heat them up. But I'm going to save that for last. And I think I have bell housing bolts, torque converter bolts. I have a couple more starter bolts to get to. They're a little tough to get to. Not tough, but I uh, couldn't get them from the bottom. Get those two out. I can take the starter out and should be ready to come out. This is probably worth noting. Um, this is the one thing on this truck that you will find is more than likely standard. The torque converter nuts are 9 sixteenths on this. It's not 15, it is 9 sixteenths. And I've run into that on. I would say, as far as I can remember, every one of these uh, 5R110 transmissions or 54 Super Duties, the 6.8s, and I think the 4.62, they've all been 916s. You know, our tendency is to grab for our metric sockets, and my experience has been that these are not. So you want to be careful of that. Just don't go putting your ratchet on there because. You put a 15 on it, you're going to round it off, and those are locking nuts are tough to get off already, so um, you want to be careful with that. All the torque converter bolts are out, now we're on the bell housing. There is one, two, three, five, six. I think there's another one down here for seven total. And these are, two of these are different lengths, and I'll show you which ones they are once I get them out. Okay, so I told you that two of the bolts were different lengths. These are five that come out and then these two where the dowel pin is on the block that lines the transmission up here 
and here are different lengths. Let me pull them out. And I'll show you. Because that dowel pin, there's a sleeve there. So there isn't threads for a little bit. So it's just about a quarter of an inch longer, something like that, three eighths maybe. Something like that. So be aware of that when you put it back together. Kind of important. Okay, I am down to the exhaust. So I'm going to get the torches out and start heating these nuts up. And uh, a few more things. You see, I got the fuel lines I got to disconnect. Um, O2 sensors, starters out, motor mounts are out. We should be just about ready to come out. So well, let me get this little stuff done, get it set up, and get uh, ready to come out of here. Okay, one more thing to note. The fuel lines are always last for me. And I'll tell you exactly why that is. Just like what I did here, I used a torch to heat this up. Okay? I wouldn't want to risk this fuel coming down here dripping or the gas fumes while I'm using the torch. So, common practice for me is to leave this as long as absolutely positive. Like right when I'm ready to pull the motor out, that's when I'll take it loose. And if I haven't forgot anything, which I don't know, I've been interrupted about 10 times so far while I'm trying to do this, so I may have. Um, plus I just forget stuff all right so it's out so in between the interruptions the phone calls and all that stuff basically I got about an hour and a half hour and a half yeah, you know what it might be a little more than that maybe about an hour and 40 minutes is about what it took but you know it's out um, I tried to leave as much on as possible because uh, there's really no sense in taking stuff off that I shouldn't have to change, like this engine harness should be the same for the F-150, shouldn't be anything different there, but uh, yeah, you guys can giggle at my, the way I lifted it out. Those are, these are wheel straps, these things are meant to hold cars, they're good for 33, 32 or 3300 pounds a piece, so I think this engine is safe. And the front, I took it around the damper pulley and crisscrossed it to my forks. It usually works pretty well, holds it good. Um, the problem is now I can't get in far enough to set it on the ground. I'm gonna have to drive the for, uh, grate all in a little bit because I want to set this on the on the floor and then do the work to it and then set it in the F-150 chassis. So uh, next, I am going to drive the grate all forward a little bit, get this set down in here, get the grate all out of the way, and start taking the front end of it and the valve covers off. Okay, let's get at it. All right, so I don't want the transmission mount to take all the weight of the transmission bouncing around when I move this chassis. So I always just take a couple old bolts. These happen to be a piece, a couple pieces of uh, what used to be U-bolts holding a truck body, truck bed on. And I just shove them in here, run a piece of wood across, and you know it's pretty secure. Saves that and. Because I don't want this getting any bent up. So these things are corroded all the time. Um, I stick a bolt in here just so it won't fall off. You know, it'll always stay where it belongs. All right, let's get this thing torn apart. Okay. So I've got the whole entire engine harness off. That's for the, it runs around the top of the engine. It comes from the ECM on this side and hits all the injectors and coils on this side. It comes down to the front, hits the VVT solenoid, cam phaser, and crank sensor down here. It comes around the back, gets both of our knock sensors, um, the O2 sensors. This one, that's a, a coolant temperature sensor, and this is that baffle in the intake where it runs it back and forth right here and here. Uh, I forget. Ford has a name for that. I can't remember what it's called, but yeah, it'll come to me. Anyways, um, if you ever heard me talk about the one vacuum line, it's just a real pain in the butt. It's this one right here. It's clear in the back, and to put it to where you can understand why it's such a pain, that firewall comes up here and then over and then up so getting to it is just there's just no room but uh, 
that's something that I don't really need to take off of this one, I don't think. I should be able to just pop it loose here, off of this one, pop it out of this bracket, and out of here, and just let it fall to the side. Okay, now I'm going to blow this out again because I've got all the wiring harness out of the way, so now I can get some more of this crap blown out. So, turn your volume down. So some things just some things just never change, right? So you take it apart, check bearings. You're replacing that one. This one sounds okay, but I can feel almost every bearing when it spins. So this one isn't long for the world either, so we'll uh water both these up um, more than likely I'll just replace that bearing because this tensioner felt really good unless it's uh, not very much money more more money then I'll uh, replace the assembly so we're down to the crank bolt you see how the threads are not filled full of silicone and the bolt has just ever a small amount of silicone where the keyway is. I think, my friends, we're in uncharted territory. Okay, the, I'm getting ready to take the balancer off. Um, it's worth it to take a minute and clean these threads. Um, you know, I wasn't going to uh, video this, but I suppose it might be helpful to some guys. Um, this is a 3 8 16 thread, so I just take that tap. Because they're pretty cruddy. I tried to. Uh, first, I take a blow gun and blow all the crap out of it. So I'm not trying to cut threads through a bunch of trash. Um, and then I just run it in a couple times, back and forth, and then it's ready to go. Um, usually, if it's real cruddy, I'll take a little PE blaster and spray in the holes. It's actually pretty decent this time. Uh, so I have my bolt grip set over here, right here. Um, this is just a basic kit. I don't know who makes it, but uh, I think Max got their name on the box, their case, but I'm sure somebody makes this for them. I doubt they make it themselves. It comes with two arbors. All right, this is the one I'm gonna use. And the first thing I wanna do, you know, I, everything gets a light, light coat of grease. If, if you put a coat of grease on this, the likeness of screwing up this arbor is a lot less. And the tool itself. Alright, so you see how that's kind of mushing around and as the threads come through, we're getting a little, little grease on there. Okay? That's not the right one. Okay, that little pointer, it goes in the end of the crankshaft. And these, I'm sorry I got that lined up wrong, there's three of them, so uh, start like this, you can see how easy those start in, and like I said they're just 3 8 16, so they're 3 8 coarse thread is, is what that really means, and uh, I'll finger, get these all finger tight first, make sure all the threads are okay, and then I'll snug them up. Um, don't try and part pry on this because you'll just you'll break the tip the edges off of this um, you know and it's got silicone in that keyway on the crank so um, it's not going to come off easy anyways okay um, now I got to grab my okay I'll tighten these up that one's not... I can see it's tight because it's touching all the way around here so I'm not going to bother running that in or anything I'm going to get a little cordless impact Slowly. I'm sure 
sure a lot of people out there that was nothing new you've seen a thousand times. Um, and then I'll just back this out. As you can see, nothing wrong with the arbor. A little bit of grease on it, so. Um, all right, let me get uh, get all my bolts out of the timing cover here and out of the bottom. We'll pull it off and let's see what we got in here. I'll bring you back. Okay, four 13 millimeter bolts headed, 13 millimeter heads that is, down there. This I think I use, what is that, an inch or seven eighths? It's seven eighths. I use seven eighths down here. It's probably metric, but I don't know why I always grab seven eighths. 13, 13, 18, 18, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 18, 18. And this is odd because this one has a second stud on this side. I don't know that I've ever run into that. Usually I see one here, but that's it. On, the, on the, the lower side, there's usually one here, one here. I don't know that I've ever seen one there. Might have, just maybe just never paid attention. All right, let's get this cover off. Okay, so I got it apart. I'm not exactly thrilled, I'm pretty frustrated. Um, and I don't think this is a big surprise to you guys. Like I take care of vehicles, I change oil, give them good service, regular maintenance, and use good parts. Um, uh, the story on this truck was I owned this truck for about three years. Um, then one of my family members took it and they had it for two years. And when I got it back, and the reason it went through the whole F-250 to F-350 dually two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive conversion was the fact that the rear end was out of it and the ball joints were out of it. Those family members, not much on maintenance, more on uh, fix what's broke. Not preventative, but enough to keep it going. So, here's what, we're, what I'm left with. You know, this is, you see what the engine looks like. This buildup is broke down oil. You know, this is because lack of maintenance, lack of oil changes, um, and it's frustrating because for what it costs this oil change, this motor takes seven quarts of oil, and from the factory they use 5W20 synthetic, okay? I use 5W30 synthetic, and that's always worked very well for me. And I've seen a lot of Ford people say that, you know, once you get enough miles on these, go to 5W30 synthetic, and it's better on the cam phasers, better on the solenoids, and they'll last longer. And I believe that, so that's what I do. However, so that being said, seven quarts of synthetic oil, and an oil filter. I mean, what are we talking here? Thirty-five dollars. Thirty-five bucks. Um, so either spend thirty-five bucks or it'll look like this. So now, in order for me to get this back to what I would consider a good condition, I mean, it's a double-edged sword. Like I could take and break off some of the stuff in here and get it out of the engine and use a vacuum as I do it. But any parts of the oil chunks or the buildup that I break loose and I don't get you know where they're gonna end up in the pickup tube and it's not like I can just sit let it sit here and run and then take the oil pan off and clean everything out again and all that so I have to do it in uh, multiple steps so I will be using engine detergent engine internal engine cleaner in this engine for the rest of its life I imagine which stinks because you know I'm using synthetic oil so I gotta be careful what detergent we're using because I don't want to break down the oil and cause more trouble. So um, this lack of maintenance really causes huge problems. And this is not an, a cheap engine to fix to begin with. But anyhow, um, enough of that. Let's get it cleaned up, get all the parts ordered, get her together and get her in that Ford in that little F-150. Okay, so I was able to crack them about a quarter of a turn, maybe an eighth of a turn. And now I'm putting enough blaster in that it just comes up where I can see an even amount in each cylinder before I before I go ahead and pull them out. That way, the way these things are made, there's threads and then there's a shank. After that, well that shank gets carbon built on it and it's tough to come through and sometimes you go to try and pull it and it's tough enough that it'll rip the threads out of the head so I try and let them soak as long as I can and then come back to it that way it has the least amount of chance to damage anything and 
some of these, like this one, is very loose. Okay? If it comes out this easy, I'm not so much worried. But um, what I'm looking for is when I come back, I want to see that my PB blaster is all gone out of that hole. Now, uh, probably a, a good thing to think about is don't put the plugs back in until you crank the engine over because you have that PB blaster in the cylinders. Um, that's why I don't use a lot of it, but uh, more than likely it'll wick its way past the rings into the oil. But it's probably a good practice to just go ahead and turn the engine over a few times without the piston or the spark plugs in and blow anything out that's in that cylinder. These all have just come loose real easily, so I'm pretty pretty thankful. Um, you know, this is not my way of taking care of a of an engine. I don't know. I've had them. I've ran trucks to 400,000 miles and uh, not had any troubles. But this is where you get troubles, that's for sure. That's just breakdown of oil, lack of maintenance. So, this one's a little stiff yet, so I'm not anxious to take that one out. Um, any of the ones that give me any grief or any resistance, I'll just let it soak, but apparently that's the only one. This one feels pretty good. Just a little too, too tight for by hand. But So we'll let this this one over here, I guess it'd be one, two, three. Cylinder number three. Let's see what that feels like. And you know what? That feels okay. Alright, let me get uh, let me get my little rubber boot thing and I'll get these pulled out. Look at that. That's my PB blaster. It makes its way past these because as soon as I crack it open, it lets it get down in here and break down this crud that's on the, the spark plug. Now, obviously, this is a lot smaller than this is, but this sticks into the head, so this could be touching the very end of the head where this goes and make it difficult. But they all came out. They all came loose. No troubles. All right, so you can see when I crack that loose, you see how wet this is? That is PB Blaster on there. So you can see how, watch my fingers, it'll break down that carbon that's on there so easy. So if there was a bunch on there, the PB Blaster breaks it down so it can come up out of that hole. Because this is threaded, this goes into the aluminum, and there's a seat right there. Well, then the hole tapers down to this size. You can see where the carbon gets up in here and then that's what gets stuck because it's a two-piece plug. So I've been doing that PB blaster thing ever since I knew these were a problem. I mean the older ones were a bigger problem but even so I mean you can see how what I mean about the carbon because that's clear up near where the ceiling surface is right there. So anyhow at least you know, they all look the same, they all look like they're burning well. Again, we're going to look at everything on these as we tear it apart. If we want to know every little clue we can. Well, that one, that one's got a lot of even carbon. Didn't break off as easy. It'll break down. But, again, that one, they're all burning nice and good. You see there's no, on the electrode, there's no oil burning or anything like that. No antifreeze on there. And, you know, we want to make sure that what we're doing is to a good motor. Even though, like I said, it ran fine. Um, it had a light tick to it, which... After seeing this, I can only imagine one of these cam followers is plugged up and can't pump. Um, so we'll uh, we'll go ahead and replace this now. Something I'm going to have to do with this engine because of the fact it's caked up. 
is I'll have to put some detergent in here. You know, back in the day we used to use uh, um, transmission fluid, a little bit of transmission fluid in the engine. Run it like that for 500 miles, change oil, do it again, put a little training fluid in it, and uh, the, the, the detergents in the transmission fluid would clean all this up. The problem is you can't you can't use something that just strips it all because then it plugs up the pickup tube. And in this vehicle, getting the oil pan off to clean that pickup tube would be harder than pulling the engine. So um, that's kind of where we're at. I'm just about as far as I can go. I really don't want to tear this apart until I have the parts. I just want to look everything over. So we'll cover this um, and I will order all the parts for it. And then once the parts are here, we'll take every cam follower, every lash adjuster, both cam phasers, both variable uh, valve timing solenoids, both guides on this side, both guides on that side, tensioners and chains. And then of course, all these spark plugs because we've got them out. Um, I may end up doing exhaust manifolds. Uh, these were not leaking. This is rare. This is a 5.4 that you don't have a ticking in the exhaust. So um, I want to put new manifolds on and new studs. So uh, I'll have to look into that. None of them are broke. Every single one of the exhaust manifold studs are in good shape here. Which um, that's rare. They're usually broken. So. I don't know. I think I'm done for today. I think uh, I think we're gonna cover this up. I'm gonna order some parts, and I'm ready to get something to eat. Sound good to you? Yeah. Sound good to me. All right. Well, all right, guys. That's it for today. Then, if you guys like what we're doing? Give us a thumbs up. I appreciate it. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Leave your comments down below.